All right, what is up guys? It is Josh back with another video on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best render settings for DaVinci Resolve for YouTube videos in 2022. Just be doing kind of an updated video uh, explaining the different settings, why I think they're the best and uh, kind of just showing the settings themselves. But if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, give me some feedback down below. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy the video and I will see you guys on my PC. All right guys, so the software I'm using for this video is DaVinci Resolve 17. All you got to do to actually find this, you just go DaVinci Resolve download and uh, you can go to their website right here personally i'm using 17 but there's a new uh version 18 but it does have bugs so i've just currently been sticking with 17 just because it's a lot more of a reliable software so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to exit out of here and uh the main focus of this video is render settings so i'm just going to drag in some random clip here just so we actually have a timeline and all we're going to do is we're going to go to the deliver tab because this is what i'm going to be focusing on davinci resolve offers a very cool feature where it allows you to easily select different formats like YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, um, all that stuff. Just kind of optimize settings, Premiere XML, um, just to import it in there, audio only, and just all these cool different things that you could actually um, use as just kind of a preset if that makes sense. But I'm going to be showing you how you can do your own custom ones because I feel like it's a lot more effective and a lot easier. So these are normally the settings that you're faced with. So for me, uh, I normally change the file name to obviously something related to the video. So for example, I do render settings tutorial, for example, something along the lines of that. And then I'd come over here to location and I would find a good location on my PC, such as Josh's YouTube videos. And I'll do something like that. And the thing about this is single clip will render all of the timeline as one clip versus individual clips will render each clip individually and 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be using single clip so I just stick with that and then coming down to video here the format I always use is either mp4 or quicktime doesn't really matter if you're uploading to YouTube I prefer mp4 personally and I use the codec as h264 the only uh, option for that and then for the resolution what I will do is I'll normally do 1920 by 1080 or if I'm you know wanting to do lossless quality i'll just do 4k and the timeline frame rate of this is 23 fps because the clips are in 24 i believe so i would normally it gives you the option to do all the different frame rates but for me what i would do is i would do you know 1920 by 1080 and i'd do something like 60 fps in any other timeline and then for the bit rate it allows you to choose kind of these things where it's this least low medium high best but i always do restrict to and i'll manually change it to 100,000 if it's a video longer than six minutes and if it's a video less than six minutes i'll do something like 130,000, which i find is a really good um, bit rate to actually do for that so 130,000 kilobytes per second as the bit rate there and uh, that's just to make sure that the file size isn't too big but we also don't lose a lot of quality which is great to see and then uh, keyframes you just do automatic you don't really need to do that key I keep frame reordering checked um, just because and then advanced settings right here keep the pixel aspect ratio to square I know some people do cinema scope but I personally think square looks a lot better and then data levels I just keep it at auto and uh, all the color stuff I keep as auto as well. So I'll just collapse the advanced settings and then subtitle settings I'll collapse as well. Coming over to audio, I will keep the codec at AAC. I know people, if they do QuickTime, they can change it to something else. I can't remember what the, what the codec is for that. Um, but the data rate for audio, I normally keep it at 192 unless I do a voiceover video. Then I'll change it to something about 350, just so it sounds a lot more clear. It's, it's hard to explain, but trust me, there is a noticeable difference if you are um, just kind of focusing as audio for the main video. So if you're doing something music related, like a music video, or you're doing some sort of voiceover or something along the lines of that, I would definitely recommend increasing the data rate for your, uh, or data rate, sorry, for your audio to about 350 to 400. And that's a massive difference, just kind of doubling um, that itself. And that is pretty much that. And then I'll just do uh, all timeline tracks for the output track right there. And then for file, um, it's super easy. Um, it'll just kind of show you you can pick the render speed um, If you want to you can t make it slower for some reason just to ensure your PC doesn't crash or um, 
change the name here, which is kind of weird. I don't know. We already did that. Um, and then it kind of shows you the disk space of your PC before and after you render it. And uh, yeah, I, I bet you a lot of you guys haven't really gone past these uh, this settings right here. I normally just do the video. I don't really worry about the audio file because that's whatever um, I do. So and then use eight digits in the file name is just not too important. Um, and then you could also start the timeline time codes. So if you want to only render a specific part of it, you can uh, pick the part where you want to actually have it start. And um, yeah, that is about it um, in terms of covering that. Um, if you were to come over to something like uh, YouTube and change it to 4K, it pretty much just covers all the basics where you can change the format, the video codec, the audio, the audio codec, the data burn and all that stuff. And um, yeah, it's just a lot more condensed version of all the settings here. But yeah, if you guys uh, had a bit of an easier time following along with this video and this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like. Um, a sub if you're new to the channel would be great. I greatly appreciate all subs. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment on some video ideas for the future on the channel and I'll be sure to read through all of them. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in a future video on the channel. Peace out.